So I do want to mention before I forget that um, next week we're going to start a new series uh, based on a book by Max Lucado. Uh, it's talking about the life of Jacob in the Old Testament um, in the book of Genesis. And so I think it'll be a good study. I, I've enjoyed the book. I think it's got a great message. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know, but especially if there's anybody listening to the recording, um, there's a video that's part of the study, about a 15-minute video. And I believe that it will work to play that video, on, you know, while we meet and uh, for the recording. But just, you know, to be aware, this is the first time we'll actually try it. And so if there's any issues, just want people to be aware, um, it should work. So, so. Do we need the book for the study? Should you we do not. To you know, the video will cover kind of the content of what we're going to talk about in the study. Um, if you want to want a copy of the book, you sure get it and it's good, but you don't need it. To, Is there like to a study? A study? Oh yeah, I'll okay. I'll have a study guide okay. for you. Okay. So yep. So that is the plan for next week. But I wanted to make sure I said that while we're recording, just in case anybody's watching and there's some glitch next week, they know what happened. <laughs> so so let's go ahead and uh, look at Habakkuk 3. We're going to read through the chapter to start with. And I'll start. And then uh, if you've got uh, readings, just follow through to the end of the chapter. So Habakkuk 3, <laughs> starting in verse 1, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet, according to Shigina. O Lord, I have heard the report of you, and your work, O Lord, do I fear. In the midst of the years, revive it. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timon and the Holy One from Mount Paran. So uh, his splendor covered the heavens and the earth and was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light rays flashed from his hand, and there he veiled his power. Before him went pestilence and plague followed at his heels. He stood and surveyed the earth. He looked and uh, startled the nations. Yes, the perpetual mountains were sh shattered. The ancient hills collapsed. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushan under distress. The tent curtains of the land of Midian were trembling. Did the Lord rage against the rivers? Or was thine anger against the, the rivers? Or was thy wrath against the sea? Thou, that thou didst ride on the horses on thy chariots of salvation. You stripped the sheath from your bow, calling for many arrows, Selah. Calling for many arrows, you split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. The raging waters swept on. The deep gave forth its voice. It lifted its hand on high. The sun and moon stood still in their place at the light of your arrows as they sped, at the flash of your glittering spear. You marched through earth in fury. You threshed the nations in anger. You went out to save your chosen people. You crushed the head of the wicked and laid bare his bones from head to toe. You destroyed with their own weapons those who came out like a whirlwind, thinking Israel would be an easy prey. Your horsemen marched across the sea, the mighty waters piled high. I heard and I heard my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones, and my legs trembled. Yes, I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, there, though there will are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet 
like the speak of deer. He enables me to go on the heights. All right. Thank you. So question one. Note the language used in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1, and also in the margins in verses 3, 9, and 13, and at the end of Habakkuk 3, verse 19. This indicates that this chapter is a song. What are some of the things that that fact brings to your mind as you consider Habakkuk 3? So you think about this chapter, what we read, the content of it, what does it tell us, what does it say, what message should we get when we realize this is a song? Well, that shiggy, uh, sh mm -hmm. what is it, shiggy enough? Shiggy enough? Mm -hmm. It's probably a literary or a musical term. Yeah. The only other place it's found is in the Psalms. So did, so did Habakkuk realize this was going to be a song or was it made into a song? I don't know that we can answer that. Oh, okay. You know, my guess would be it was made, he made it into a song. Habakkuk? Yeah. Or, okay. So he was musical then. Or so. maybe he had a partner in yeah, the music maybe. part of it. I don't know. We don't know. But it, it's a song. That's what it is. That's what we have. So, so anything else? The, the cella. Yes. Or the yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. That was the question. I was, we see cella three different times. Yep. Here. What, and I think we talked about this before. But what does that mean exactly? We don't know. <laughs> so, I don't think of a wrong. Like you know. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of speculation about what it means. There's all kinds of things written about what it might mean, but we really don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Probably the the most um, favored understanding of it right now that I'm aware of is that it indicated some kind of pause in either the you know the words that were sung and then we're going to take a little pause or a pause in the music but you know it might be crescendo mm -hmm. some talk about it being a change of voices mm -hmm. there's all kinds of ideas it's the only shot it's in the bible it's, in it's all lot. over in psalms yeah yeah, yeah well, that's the thing you know the verse one the only other place that is is in the psalms selah in the psalms and that phrase, the statement at the end, that's that very common in the psal psalms to the choir master with stringed instruments. Hmm. So Wonderful. it is a song. For what it's worth, my natural inclination was to read the previous line over. Oh, huh. What do you mean? To repeat. To repeat. <laughs> no, after you I think that was a mistake. <laughs> I'm blaming it on Sela. <laughs> One of my favorite Christian groups yeah. Uses this name Selah. Yeah. As, okay. And I, I yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other things that it tells us that this is a song? The last sentence for the director of music mm -hmm. yeah. on my stringed instruments. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. And he wrote that, Habakkuk. Yes. He wrote that line. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You know, the so Selah, that's in current, in, yeah, in, no, in italics. And so that says that might not be original. That oh. might have been added. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. verse 1 and verse um, 19 are part of the text. So, hmm. yeah. Seems to be broke down into... Uh, yeah. My verses. Yes. Verses. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. And so one of the things just... I, I mean, to, you know, a couple... I mentioned on Sunday... One of the things this tells us is, you know, this is, a, you know, verse one, this is a prayer of Habakkuk. So this is his prayer, mm -hmm. his personal prayer. Mm -hmm. It's very personal, but he made it into a song mm -hmm. that was used in the worship of the people of Israel. When would it have been used? 
right away as soon as it was in the so book. there were people what would these i mean he, he was complaining about yeah well it's just chapter three that's the song but i mean he was complaining about the corruption in but there's not much of that in chapter three that was but i mean chapter one. what choir would have there been that was singing in the temple. Oh, they were still they doing, were still doing oh, stuff. Yeah, okay. Right alongside the idolatry. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That, I that's had a good question. Parish come in my mind. I mean, I'm, this is he's looking at destruction coming. This is not good news. Mm -hmm. He's probably yes. going to be very upset, very sad, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But who else in Pearl? Decided to start singing Paul and Silas. Yeah. 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 And that last 17 through 19 just. Yeah. It's amazing. That gives me chills. It's amazing. That was, yeah, that amazing verse. But, but part of it should be we recognize here, since it's made into a song, it's for use in Israel's worship, that even though this is a very personal, private, you know, prayer of Habakkuk. It was intended for more than just him. Mm -hmm. It was for the whole nation mm -hmm. to hear. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's here in the Bible. God put it here for us, too. And so the message is for us. The other part of it is because it is a song, poetry, mm -hmm. it, I'll just read this statement from one of the commentators. This poem is one of the most difficult in the Old Testament due to the prevalence of unique grammatical forms, archaic language, highly stylized poetry, succinctness, and cosmic sim symbolism that is for many shrouded in mystery. Mm. And so as you read this, if you look at other translations, translations may be quite different mm. because it's really hard mm. to translate. Mm. You know, this is written as Hebrew poetry. And so to translate Hebrew poetry into English poetry doesn't, is doesn't challenging. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, you know, if people write a song, if they're, you know, expressing their feelings and, you know, they put it in the form of a song, a lot of times the language they use is, you know, a little different and they're using imagery and symbolism and, you know, it's not the same as if you're writing things out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've got that, it's a song and it's having to be translated. And so just to recognize those things. The mine, the very last line we've talked about mm -hmm. this before, but it says for the choir director on my string instruments that's what mine says is that when mm -hmm. yours too mine yeah too. so did he play instruments too which would probably yeah, make sense does, yeah if he's mm -hmm. yeah i don't know for sure but yeah that that's an interesting thing yeah. too. so question two then in habakkuk 3 verse 2 habakkuk prayed in wrath remember mercy what do you think he meant by that request that this is a prayer and that's part of his initial prayer. God in wrath, remember mercy. Well, he knows God is angry with Israel. And he's praying for mercy. <laughs> he knows what's coming. He knows what's coming. Yes. Yeah. Do you think that maybe there was a remnant of the people that mm -hmm. were following the Lord? Yes. 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 Yeah, exactly. and so that's, that. yeah, yeah, I think that for sure is part of his prayer. You know, just, just to recognize, he, you know, like you say, he knows judgment is coming. God's wrath is due to them. But he's praying for mercy. You know, there are some people that aren't rebellious, aren't, you know, mm -hmm. against you. Mm -hmm. Remember them. And then also, it's God, you know, basically, the nation of Israel deserves to be wiped out. That's what we should get. But God, please don't do that. 
Um, and, and he believes, and that's why he prays it, that God's judgment is meant to be redemptive, not destructive. You know, judgment needs to happen. But God has a purpose, a plan, that remnant then can mm -hmm. hold on and turn around and lead the way to go the other direction. And so, in, in their history has shown that God is merciful yeah. to them in the end. You know, there's many times where bad things had to happen to wipe out mm -hmm. some of them or mm -hmm. part of them yeah. or whatever. But then he would he would show mercy and save. Yes. You know, like he saved Lot out of Sodom right. and Gomorrah. Right. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, there's, there's, Noah, and, and even in the flood, he, saw, yeah, yeah, he yeah. saved Noah yeah. and his yeah. family. So they know that he is merciful. So, you know, they, you're going to keep asking him for mm, that yes. when you know yes. that things are going to get yeah. bad. That's exactly right. Yeah. So question three, I mentioned on Sunday that God responds to Habakkuk's prayer with what's called a theophany a manifestation, a revelation of himself. And that's what we have in verses 3 through 15. God, it's like God gives Habakkuk this vision, this picture, this message, showing who he is. So question three, write down the references to nature, to the creation that you see in verses 3 through 15. What are some things that this focus on the creation would convey to Habakkuk? What should it convey to us? So there's a lot about creation in this theophany, in this revelation. What are the things that you see, the words, the phrases that you note that connect to the creation? His praise filled the earth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Splendor covered the heavens. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we got the whole earth and heavens in view. Brightness like the light. Yeah. Yeah. You think any thankful to see, he would. Yeah. So you got seas that are involved. Mountains shattered. Yeah, mountains. Yeah, collapse. Pestilence, plague. Yeah, those natural or part of the fall disasters. Yeah. Shook the earth, made the nations tremble. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talks about the horses. Yeah. The rivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The sea. Yeah. So there's a lot, a lot of reference to this world, to creation, to the universe. So what what are the things that this would convey to Habakkuk as he's seeing, hearing this message from God, and that all of this creation is involved? What what would that say? What message would come through to Habakkuk? God's power. Yes, for sure creation, the power of God. He's God. He's the creator, and all of this is happening. Yeah, so for sure, God's power comes through. Is there anything else that you think of? The other thing that gets mentioned is Probably part of what God wanted to help Habakkuk understand is, you know, the, the what's being described isn't just involving Habakkuk or Jerusalem or even mm -hmm. Israel. The whole creation is being affected by this. And so what's going on, what God is doing is bigger than just Habakkuk or his city or his people. God's work here is universal. It's cosmic in scope. And that's important um, as we look at the message that comes through here. So question four, what historical events do the poetic allusions refer to, especially in verses three through 10? Do you see some of the <clears throat> phrases, the things that are talked about what would that have brought to mind to Habakkuk and to the people of Israel? See any connections with earlier things from Israel's history? What it says is, well, in my paraphrase, mm -hmm. it says his brilliant splendor 
fills the earth and sky. And I think of when Jesus was born. Of course, that wouldn't have happened yet, would have it? That was later. But on. that's interesting <laughs> that that you know that fits that picture of what God was going yeah, to do when the angel yeah. appeared. In the yeah, world. yeah, for sure. We talked about on Sunday about Mo Moses on Mount Sinai. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the mountains and the mountains. yeah, yeah. So Mount Sinai. Anything else come to your mind as you think about the imagery that's used in these verses? Well, the plague went before him, pestilence followed his steps. That's what happened when Moses got the slaves um, out of um, Egypt, you know. The yes. Yes. Yeah. And so that reference seems very direct mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. the pestilence and plagues is reminding them of when God delivered his people out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else in these verses, the imagery that reminds you of that time period of the Exodus? Well, well when he split the ocean, I mean, the yeah. sea. Yeah. And then because the it talks about the chariots yeah. and yes. the yes. road with your horse. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's not a direct movement. reference, mm -hmm. but the, the things that are there, the pieces of the imagery mm -hmm. is seems like it's made directly to remind them of the crossing of the Red Sea. And then he also talks about rivers. And so when they went into the promised land, mm -hmm. the end of that time period, God split mm -hmm. the Jordan River for them to go across. Mm -hmm. It also makes me think of the flood. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because it talks Some about the imagery. deep uttered yes. force. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this is, you know, it's it's all reminding them of God's work in the past, what they knew from the Old Testament. Now, <clears throat> the thing that we probably don't get so easily that they would have is, so <clears throat> focused especially on the time of the Exodus, the people of Israel in slavery in Egypt crying out to God. God, this is horrible. We're dying. Please come and save us. And God says to them at that time, I've heard your cries and I'm going to save you. And this pictures God kind of starting out in Israel, hearing the prayers, and then moving down through around the Mediterranean and coming into Egypt. And so the geographical references mm -hmm. picture his, you know, moving mm -hmm. from Israel down to Egypt to come and save them. Mm -hmm. And it pictures God as this mighty warrior with his chariot, uh, you know, rushing from Israel to come and save his people. And so that's the picture uh, that they would have gotten as God revealed this to Moses. So was Teman and Mount Paran there, there in so Teman, Teman and Mount Paran. you know is is more towards the the east on the eastern side of Israel mm -hmm. and then coming down to Paran to the lands of Midian, which it mentions, you know, all of that was the direction that he would have come okay. to get down to Egypt. So, so, how does remembering what God has done in the past help Habakkuk, and how can it help us? You know, it seems like that's what he's doing, saying, remember what I've done. How was that going to be helpful to Habakkuk? Well, it was so chaotic and horrible back then, but God redeemed, you know, mm -hmm. them and they kept going and we seemed to grow and expand and follow them and, mm -hmm. and they turn against him, but God is all, he sticks with them, oh, the ones that are faithful to him. Yeah. You got to face you, God will take care of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They cried out to God for help. God heard them. God came, God rescued them, and if he did it then, he can do it now. That's right. You know, and that's, you know, that seems like is the point. Um, and again, one of the things that, again, we probably don't get very easily, but that 
the way that it's written, they would have understood it more directly is it's written in such a way that it's it's almost like it's picturing Habakkuk being brought in to join God in the chariot. Mm -hmm. And he's riding along okay. as God comes to rescue his people. Mm -hmm. He's given mm -hmm. like this front row seat mm -hmm. in, in this vision of what happened. And so, you know, the, the idea is, you know, Habakkuk can trust God to act here and now. He's, he's let him see what he did in the past, and he's showing him, I can do this again. I can, I can bring back and restore my people. So question five, how does Habakkuk describe his, so we've got this vision that God gives Habakkuk. How does Habakkuk describe his initial reaction to God's message in verse 16? Fear. Fear, yes. Scared to death. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that probably is a good way to, to put it. It's very graphic imagery. Um, you know, what Habakkuk is feeling. Um, you know, my legs tremble. Uh, the cave comes into my bones. Um, yeah, so. It's, it's like waiting for toast to pop. <laughs> you know, it, it's. I think it's the waiting safe, safe. is only almost. worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the waiting is not knowing when it's going to come is almost worse. Yeah, scary. And when it actually comes, yeah. almost. But that's the same thing. It comes when it's ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we should we should probably you know just know kind of the two sides to the reaction to back a cast. So the first half of verse 16, you know, the, the description that he gives of how he feels, the body trembling, lips quivering, rottenness in my bones, legs trembling. Why is what he heard from God so difficult? Why does it cause him such fear, such anguish in his physical body, in his heart, his soul? What is it that he's afraid of? Well, that's a question I was wondering. Was he afraid for himself or was he afraid for his people? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have known that. <laughs> but what was he afraid of? For, for himself, the, for his people? For what the, was it? For the people to arise who will invade us. But that's the end of the verse. Yeah, I like, think we need to, there's two halves to it. Yeah. So but, what is the fear in the beginning of the verse? Before you get to that, why is he so afraid? Said I hear. So he's heard God's message. What is it that he heard that makes him so afraid? What is he afraid of for himself and for his people? What is going to happen? The invasion and be taken to Babylon yeah. as captives. Yes. Yeah, mine's going to be an easy not prey. Die, not people yeah. are going to die. Yes. Yeah. So judgment is coming, and this is going to be horrible. Pretty bloody fight. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the nation, everything is going to be wiped out. And so that's the first thing. He's terrified, and it's going to be horrible. But then at the end of the verse... And that's the next question. Um, what is it that Habakkuk has to wait for? And why is that so hard? For Babylon to rise up and invade. Yeah. And the day of calamity will come upon Babylon, it sounds right. like. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, they will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come oh, on the nation invading, invading us. Babylon's invading them, so he's waiting for calamity to come on to Babylon. So God will. Mine is different. What, oh, is what did yeah. you say? Because I must wait quietly for the day of distress, for the people to arise who will invade us. 
So there'll be distress on those people that invade them, right? Yeah, it's it's worded yeah. a little different. And so yeah. I think it's still saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for that's right here. Yeah. For the day of distress for the people. To arrive. For, for but them. there's to arrive. I'm waiting that... for the people. Yeah. It, it's it's that's not as understood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and mine is. Like Diane's. So yeah. Calamity yeah. to come on the, on the nation. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that would that's be been interesting, but you have so, it. No, just to recognize both of those things are going on right mm -hmm. now. He's seeing the judgment coming on his people and what's going to happen to him and his city and his nation. But then he's going to have to wait for 70 years mm -hmm. before the judgment comes on those who mm -hmm. invaded him. And so both of those things are happening that are a struggle for him. Doesn't really say if he lives through that. Huh? Yeah. It we don't know. We we I think we have good reason to believe he lived through it. But what exactly his experience was after that we don't know. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, that's the struggle. Hmm. So, so did well, all this happen then in Babylon? No grapes on the vines and figs. Well, I think that's He's describing what happened at that time. The oh, in Israel. Yes. Okay. Yeah. When they come. When they come. So that's question eight. What would it be like? What would life be like mm -hmm. if all of verse seventeen mm -hmm. were true at once? Mm -hmm. Starvation. Yeah. Yes. It's horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Everything mm -hmm. is gone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the the picture we probably should have is Babylon, the empire, the armies come probably from multiple directions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they capture each city on the way to Jerusalem as they go. And so the circle keeps getting smaller. Mm -hmm. The people from those outer cities, the ones who escape, where did they go? They run to the city. They run to the city. They all go to oh, Jerusalem. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. That's the only place you can go. And Babylon keeps coming. Mm -hmm. And eventually surrounds the city, sets up a siege. Nothing can come in or out. And what happens? Starve them out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually, mm -hmm. uh, all their resources, all their stores are gone, mm -hmm. and then Babylon comes in and just wipes mm -hmm. everything out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like they even killed the cattle and the, the sheep on their way. Yes, they just whatever they could get yeah. their hands on. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, they're going to they probably ate wipe them. out the nation. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably. For the soldiers, probably. right? Yeah, the soldiers. Did, yeah, yeah. 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 So then, question nine. One commentator speaks of Habakkuk taking the idea of faith, even in a time of trial, to the point of absurdity. Why would he say that, based on Habakkuk's words in verses 16 through 19? Why would somebody say, this is just ridiculous, that Habakkuk would speak in this way? What would they be referring to in those those verses? Do you get the idea? I think he's just making a point that no matter what, I'm going to trust God. Kind of like Joel. Mm -hmm. But Habakkuk takes it a step farther, I think, because he doesn't say. I'm just going to trust God. What he says is, I'm going to True. rejoice. True. Yeah. I'm going to that's, take joy. Yeah, I'm going to more literally dance with joy. That is ridiculous when you think of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how is Habakkuk able to do that? What would you say enables Habakkuk? to be able to say, even if all of this happens, even when all of this happens, I will rejoice, I will 
take joy. Well, just in knowing what lies ahead when, when, because he's saved. Mm -hmm. So he has, I think for all of us, that's mm -hmm. what we have to look forward to. And that's what we have to think about when everything else is just because we know that in the end, mm -hmm. it will be, it will be so wonderful and so joyous. Yeah. So he's, he's remembering and holding on to the promise of what is to come ultimately in the end. I think for sure that fits in here. And I think the fact that God answered him by giving him this vision and, and him remembering mm -hmm. how bad things had been in, in Egypt and yet, mm -hmm. you know, how God took them mm -hmm. and just, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Seeing, remembering that, yeah. and having God show yeah. him that. Yeah. He says the sovereign Lord is my strength, so he's giving him strength day to day to just yes. endure. Yeah, to keep going and remember yeah. his yeah. soul is saved. Yeah. That's what counts. And so, to, you know, just recognizing, you know, Habakkuk struggled through this book, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. This has been hard for him, and he's still struggling. In verse 16, mm -hmm. you know, this is still how he feels. And yet he is able to say, I will rejoice. I will take joy because God has revealed himself. God has given him his word, told him what's going to come. And that's true for us, too. You know, how can we survive? How can we find joy even in the midst of struggle? It's only as God shows himself to us, as God works in our lives through his word. And then, you know, it's God who does it. You know, he is my strength. And then those phrases in verse 19, he makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. It's God who does it. It's not the back, you know. And then, you know, the other thing to recognize, and kind of going along with what you were saying, Joel, but just recognizing, he says, I'll take joy, I, and I will rejoice in the Lord. I'll take joy in the God of my salvation. He's not rejoicing in the circumstances. Right. It's not like, oh, these are so wonderful things going on. <laughs> Those things are horrible. That's mm -hmm. verse 16. He feels that. it's That's happening to him right now. But the Lord is still a source of joy to him. The God of his salvation, and salvation not just future, but now. You know, I've been forgiven. I know God. God loves me. You know, I can rejoice in that even when this is horrible. You know, I was thinking, I, again, I'm thinking of Paul and Silas mm -hmm. and Prism. Yep. But I'm also got a question. I think maybe this is not a fair question right now, but Job, what was mm -hmm. his attitude in the end? And I mean, was he like this too? <laughs> I, do you... Job, Job is a little different because... God, you know, God reveals himself to Job, too. Yeah. You know, in those last couple of chapters, God brings up himself as the creator and the one who is in control of everything. And in the end, Job falls down before God in repentance and says, God, I shouldn't have complained. <laughs> you know, you're God. You know, and so it's a little bit different than Habakkuk, but it, it, there are a lot of comparisons, a lot of things to, to see as parallel, too. Yeah. It's an amazing, amazing picture that we have here in the book of Habakkuk. And just recognizing, you know, the whole picture, Habakkuk struggled. It was hard for him. He had difficult questions, and it was really difficult for him to work through all of that. And even in the end, he's still petrified, and it's horrible. But even in that, 
there is a source of joy and hope. So I guess applying it to our lives today, we, we may not have a country after this election. So <laughs> we can remember there's a bigger picture. I yes. Guess. Right. Yes. Well, yeah. I think the thing is, the difference is they had it tougher, I think, then because we now know what Jesus Christ yes. 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 We saw them. We have to believe in him. Yes. I mean, yes. when you look at those 365 oh, people that amazing. were, uh, you know, persecuted and killed more than 2023. Yeah, you know, Christians. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Three hundred sixty-five million. Mm -hmm. So consequently, they must what they had, what they relied on, was the fact that hey, yeah. Jesus Christ is my savior. Yes, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and I yeah. can, I'll be with him. Yeah, yeah. you're heaven bound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and that that is, you know, it's amazing to me how Jesus comes into this picture. Um, and I don't know if I can find the 13. phrase. Yeah, you're anointed. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, the way that it's written, mm -hmm. the, the easiest way to understand that is you're anointed as the people of Israel. But the phrase Habakkuk uses is never used of the people of Israel in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like God is pointing to Jesus, really. Oh, yeah. yeah. Verse 13 sounds like Jesus yeah. in, in my translation. Yeah, yeah and, and, and because that, it seems like that is what God, the direction God wanted us to go mm -hmm. with this. It's not just yeah. talking about Israel. It's pointing mm -hmm. to Jesus. Similar to what he says in the garden, you know, yeah. about striking the... Yeah, 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 yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so the enemy is Satan, right. not just that. Right. You crush the head of the house of the wicked. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so Jesus in that, and then the whole idea of calling us to remember. You know, remember what I've done. And we have that mm -hmm. in the New Testament, you know, most directly in the Lord's Supper, where Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. And what is it we're supposed to remember? We're supposed to remember Jesus, his body given for us, his blood shed for us. It's the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we're to remember. And that's where we can find hope, even in the worst of situations. So, well, let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this book and for the message of this chapter. Heavenly Father, as we look at our world and wonder what's going to happen and where things are going, Lord, help us to trust that you are able and that you are in control. Give us faith. And Lord, help us to remember that we can even rejoice in the midst of trials because of your salvation, because of who you are. But we pray that you would give us strength. Help us to be able to stand. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Is Habakkuk mentioned any other place in the Bible besides this book? No. He isn't. Jesus will refer to 